Hello and welcome back to what. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome back to the What Is Life Dude podcast, everybody. We are Eric and Sarah. Welcome back. Hello to our listeners. Hello to those who are watching on YouTube because we are now filming again. I really fricked that up, didn't I? It's fine. I've never done that before. I, I, I think I got confused as to whether I say welcome, welcome to the what is life. I, I don't even know what I say now and I just said it. Hello and welcome back to the, I don't know. I forgot what the thing was. Do you ever think about breathing too hard and then you get afraid that you're going to forget how to breathe? Um, no, but you know, there is that thing, that phenomenon that happens which is now happening to me because we're talking about it, <laughs> where like, and now all of our listeners is going to happen to, but it's when like you think too hard about breathing and then you start manually breathing, mm-hmm. you know, or like when you become really aware that your tongue is in your mouth. Yes. Have you ever had that? Or I mean, eating too, swallowing food. Sometimes I think really hard about, oh my God, how do I, how did I learn how to eat? Am I going to just choke right now? Yeah. It's like that episode of... um what was the the one we watched where the girl keeps dying over and over again? Oh, Russian doll. Russian doll. And one of the ways she dies is choking on a chicken wing because right. she starts thinking about the mechanics of eating too much. Doesn't choking on a chicken wing <laughs> sound like some sort of like jazz standard? It's like, yeah, pull open, uh, go to that book and go to page 34 or play and choking on a chicken wing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. It's something for out of whiplash. Yeah. Uh, did you just do the whiplash hand i movement? did i did the uh oh. there's a moment where jk simmons almost a jk rowling jk simmons the conductor in whiplash looks at the horn section or the trombones he says trombones don't forget to show up the ninth and he points <laughs> like this in this very weird way and uh, if you're not a musician you wouldn't know that uh sharpening the ninth saying that to a whole group of trombone players like makes no fucking sense i mean (laughs) you wouldn't need to tell them to make a note different it would just be written in the music Mm -hmm. so that movie was not musical (laughs) at all and i hated it for that reason did we talk about the film when we watched it because i feel like it was within the past year i think we did yeah i'm like i'm pretty sure we did and i probably trash talked it then like i am now like the movie is good the movie as a music film Mm -hmm. doesn't make that much sense yes but whatever we're not here to talk about whiplash. We're here to talk about our lives and how they affect you, the listener. Okay, now that's not really true. <laughs> it's mostly just entertainment. Uh, okay, so what are we talking about? This past week, let's just do a vibe check. Mm-hmm. We should just start with a vibe check because we were talking about what we're going to talk about this episode. And Sarah was like, well, what's the, what was the vibe of our, of our past week? Mm-hmm. So I'm like, maybe vibe check is sure. where we start. Um, so we've been doing a whole lot of musicianing and not so much musicing, if that makes sense. We've, we've been continuing to do like the analytic, uh, you know, logistical stuff, the, yeah, researching, what, what marketing, taking photos, which I absolutely hate doing. Fun fact. <laughs> I don't know why. I just I've always loved making visual art. Like I like like graphic design a lot more than I like actually taking photos of things and editing photos. Yeah, especially of yourself. Or... Yeah, I mean, just add in like m- how critical I am of the way I look all the time. Right. It adds another layer in there. So. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, I kind of like it. Which just totally fits our personality. Eric likes being in photos and being photographed. Yeah, we kind of, we knew we were going to have to take some photos to update our Spotify page and just have more content for Instagram and whatnot. But we didn't know, it was like two days ago, we didn't know on that day that that's the day we were going to do it. And we kind of just said, all right, well, we want to submit our song on Spotify for playlist consideration to the editors. And, you know, they always tell you to have updated photos and an updated bio so we've been kind of doing those things slowly and we're like well i guess now is a good a time as any to take new photos and i was like hey babe she was like what and i was like can you cut my hair <laughs> because you know like the sides grew in a little bit and i want it to be nice and shorn for photos so i look extra punk and sarah was like yes yes i mean you were stressed enough having to 
do the photos because I'm not the camera person. You're mm-hmm. the camera person. And then you have to do your makeup and you have to do your hair. Then you have to do my makeup and you have to do my hair. <laughs> um, to clarify, yeah. I only put a little bit of makeup on Eric. Just around the eyeballs. Just around the... Um, Not like eyeliner. The dark circles. Yeah. Just... I guess I have... I'm really red under under and around my eyes. And everywhere. I'm Really? I really am. And I guess I'm vascular under my eyes. Because my <laughs> eyes are just so shredded from <laughs> doing eyelid workouts at Eye the gym. Curls. Yeah. Uh, we saw this guy doing neck workouts at the gym a few weeks ago. Like, I know that's a thing. It just seems dangerous. I've only seen that one person doing specific neck workout ever and jeff nippard yes on youtube yeah he had a harness around his head from the harness was dangling a chain and affixed to the chain was like a plate like a lot of weight i don't know yeah it seemed dangerous as you were describing that before you got to the plate of weight it could have been a sex thing like all the way up to (laughs) having it still could be a sex thing i guess that's true yeah (laughs) really those neck workouts really get you going in your loins um all right what are we doing here so okay that's what we've been doing in the last week is we've kind of we kind of agreed to take (laughs) so stupid we agreed to take kind of a step back from the actual making of our original music in order to set ourselves up better for when our first song first song comes out on july 23rd Mm -hmm. you know because as sarah says you got to wake up the algorithms right (laughs) because if you follow us on instagram which you should at cute threat which you definitely should now because we're actually posting stuff and that's kind of the whole thing is that we weren't really posting anything so we're like okay we got to post like we'll post videos of covers that we've done in the past and we'll take some new photos and we'll post clips from this podcast And we'll kind of let Instagram know. Hey, we are alive. That's exactly what I was going to say. Yes. Yeah. So just so hopefully more people see when we say, hey, we put out a song for the first time. Do you want to give it a spin? Right. Mm -hmm. We cracked a thousand followers on Instagram. Amazing. Really is. We had 999 and I screenshotted it and posted it to my personal Instagram story. And I said, who wants to be, who wants to break the threshold here? And then we got like five or six people i was like nice broke a thousand it's really fortuitous that you are the one who who is managing the administration of that account because i am so bad at self-promo i like managing the social media the problem i have is not having enough content yeah i am happy to make the content i will write the captions eric puts it up there answers comments answers dms reposts things if we're tagged in things i love that shit when people like tag us in an in an instagram story and you know someone shared our photo and they're like look at these two cool cats and someone (laughs) else was like can't wait to hear your first original song and i'm like share repost (laughs) put a funny sticker gif on there and say thank you because it makes us feel good and it makes them feel good it's an all-around winning situation and i love handling that I'm glad. Yeah. For some reason, I feel like I've just, I've been on social media and it's been my job for so long that I, it, I kind of associate checking messages or comments with, or like really any analytics, I associate that with stress. So it's hard for me to do and I really have to kind of psych myself, what, psych myself out? Psych that's, yourself That's the up. opposite, right? Psych yourself up. Yeah, I got to pump myself up to actually do it. So I'm glad right. that it's Eric like has you have like notifications on your phone when we get emails or things like that. Oh, yeah. yeah. And he just answers them right away. Mm-hmm. I have to do an entire like ritual to feel <laughs> comfortable to open my inbox. Three shots of tequila, <sighs> a gram of shrooms. <laughs> yes, a and gram. A, an entire lobotomy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I do like it and I really like interacting with the people who care about us and i mean i could only hope that at some point there's too much to keep up with to handle Mm -hmm. yeah like how your inbox is always like maxed out Mm -hmm. i'm just like i just can't comprehend like sometimes i'll open up my instagram after i share an instagram story that people find funny and i have like seven responses and i'm like woo, i'm famous (laughs) 
And like, that's, it's really a lot to me. So mm-hmm. that's been cool. Um, on Saturday, what's today? Tuesday? Yes. On Saturday, I started working on this project for this guy I do a lot of work for. And he was like, oh, will you write this custom song in this style, you know, with these lyrics? And Can we just like, say, Eric has been working f- with this guy for a- over a year at this point, mm-hmm. would you say? Right when COVID started last right. year. Right. He's a business owner. I feel like we may have talked about him before, but... We can talk about who he is. Sure. He's Well, he's a business owner. He was a volleyball coach, is still. Both, yeah. And he just wanted a bunch of fun, like, custom songs about volleyball mm-hmm. for his social media. Yeah. Very specific. Mm-hmm. Well, it was, like I said, it was right when COVID had started... And his whole volleyball team was like, they couldn't practice and whatnot because they weren't allowed to be around each other. Mm -hmm. So he had me write this song about um, how him and his team have the volleyless blues. And I wrote like this blues song about how they're all sad they can't play volleyball. Right. Um, So that was my first project with him. And it's just continued. But what I think is so funny is that he always, he writes the lyrics and then he gives them to Eric and Eric makes them into music but he gives eric like a an artist or a genre to model it after so the most recent one is matchbox 20 Mm -hmm. which is so specific Uh, what was the last one was that the one we did together yeah yeah so he commissioned me for a song (laughs) but wanted sarah to sing on it so we kind of wrote this thing together and we did like a taylor swift thing Mm -hmm. i think he referenced like kind of older like the rocky country kind of taylor swift you've done some kanye right specifically specifically, what harder better faster stronger is that the name of the song i don't know i think it might be called stronger y'all know but it's the remix with daft punk right with the vocoder harder better faster stronger so i kind of re but it's been really cool because no one really asks me to do as eclectic a mix Mm -hmm. of genres as he does so, but since we have this relationship and he's not someone that's just like commissioning me on Fiverr and there's like a time limit and, you know, Fiverr like, uh, gives you a demerit every time you do like a little thing that's not like perfect, you know, mm-hmm. like if you, if you don't respond to a message within like an hour, they demerit you basically. It's like kind of fucked up. Punishing. It really is punishing. So it's been nice working with him outside of that context because I'm like, I've never made a song that sounds like harder, better, faster, stronger. He's like, yeah, take your time, figure it out. And then I kind of learned this whole new thing about music production. And I don't know, it's, it's cool. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> if, you're, if you're into volleyball at all, his company is called VB Rags. And they sell like, they have this whole new line of like volleyball, uh, like athletic wear and stuff like that. And they have... I think they opened two stores, one in Jersey and one in California. That shocked so cool. me when you showed me footage of they, yeah. they filmed inside the stores. Because the funny thing is, like, Eric works on Fiverr. When you do freelance, I feel like it's a lot of people who are just kind of starting a business, like, as a hobby even. Like, a lot of, like, smaller podcasts. Who else have you done? Like, intros for people who are going to give speeches, like public speakers. Yeah, mostly YouTube and podcasts. So it's like always my assumption that the people you're working with aren't like going to open up multiple stores. Do you know what I mean? So when I saw that, I was like, holy crap. Wow. The entrepreneurial spirit is alive. alive. (laughs) It's just cool because he's kind of, I'm like, oh, is this for a podcast or YouTube channel? And he's like, no, I just want to like make some fun songs for my players, you Mm -hmm. know, because they're all like. Actually, I don't know if they all are, but I'm assuming most of them are like high school, college age. So he's like, I just want to do this fun thing for my kids, <laughs> basically. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm like, oh, that's pretty sweet. But, you know, he has like a YouTube channel now with volleyball related content. And I've made theme songs for every single one of the segments. And like, it's just, it's been a, such a cool thing. So if you're into volleyball, check out VB Rags. <laughs> um, I can't play volleyball. So, but... What was I saying? Oh, so on Saturday, I was trying to work on that new song for him. And like sometimes when you're commissioned to write just a, you have to just write a song, a full ass song, Mm -hmm. not like a 30 second theme song, like a three minute song with all the lyrics in front of you. And he's like, make it sound like Matchbox 20. Sometimes (laughs) you just can't, right? Like sometimes it's just really difficult. 
So I was struggling so hard and I worked on it for like an hour and I didn't have anything I liked. And I was like, what can I do? So I sat at my computer and I took all of our cover videos that we have on YouTube and I made them into like 30 second vertical videos for Instagram, <clears throat> whoa, Instagram reels and TikTok. Mm-hmm. And it was so satisfying, just like fucking content, man. Like we already made the content and we're repurposing. That's what they always tell you to do. Like repurpose everything and more content is alive. Yeah. I feel like when you have writer's block or when you're trying to make something artistic and you're kind of hitting a a wall, I feel like having that little context switch is really nice. And then when you come back to it, you, you kind of have like a fresh perspective. I was watch or was listening to um, a song Exploder a couple weeks ago with Phoebe Bridgers and she had a little segment at the end about writer's block and she said you know if I'm having trouble finishing something I'll just go up I'll go and tidy my house I'll tidy but you have to tidy one thing because a lot of times also people get into the habit of using like tasks to avoid doing things things they need to do so it's really important to do like a little bit of something else and then come back I'm guilty of that of like I have to get this thing done. I think I'm going to deep clean the entire house today. <laughs> I'm going to empty all of our pantry. Right, there's like a fine line between procrastination and clearing <laughs> your mind. Yeah. What I needed was to clear my mind because I was so pissed. I was so frustrated. He really was. <laughs> and I came out on the couch and I was like, wah, 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 wah. And Sarah's like, um, take a deep breath. <laughs> And I was, and I was like, "No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna finish the song right now." And then I stormed back into the studio and sat down and was like, "That's a bad idea because <laughs> how could I write something great now?" He's like, "I asked for Matchbox Twenty. This sounds a little bit like mm, Opeth." Opeth, <laughs> <laughs> that's a weird band you pulled out of your ass. It's just the first like I, heavy. I wouldn't assume you knew Opeth. <laughs> well, hmm. full of surprises. Okay, <laughs> uh, if you don't know who Opeth is, they're like a hardcore band right yeah yeah so um yeah i write his volleyball song very angrily but no then i came back out and i was like no i'm just gonna take a break and then you like rub my back for five minutes and i was like i feel better <laughs> and like everything was fine your john mulaney voice i know really it's, special it's because we just watched a john mulaney clip of, of when he went to the um urologist to find it on youtube <laughs> Uh, I feel like we were going to take, I feel like I had somewhere to take this and then I lost it in uh, all the weirdness. Well, you were just talking about your, doing your commission and I feel like the our theme of the past week is that we've been doing, yes, a lot of logistical stuff and content creation stuff and content repurposing stuff for the band. Are we a band? Our music? I don't <laughs> like calling us a band, but I don't know what else to call us. Right. We were writing our Spotify bio and we're like, wow. What do we call ourselves? Eric's like lovers. I'm like absolutely not. <laughs> that was a joke. I hate that. <laughs> that was a joke. It says Cute Threat is an indie slash pop duo, mm-hmm. uh, comprised of lovebirds. No, Sarah Sullivan. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, just not. It says um, I might just say couple, mm-hmm. couple, yeah. or a couple of a couple of lovebirds. Right. So we've been doing a lot of stuff for the band, but also we have been kind of trying to find a balance between working on that and also our job jobs, which for Eric is the freelance music. So you did a few commissions this week and I dove back into Sarah's Vegan Kitchen um, and I've been quite obsessed with it actually the past week. Like really obsessed. (laughs) Yeah. Like redesigning your entire website. I've redesigned my blog once a year for the past two, three years, and it always gets like a little bit better. I don't think it's, I'm not saying it's a good thing to redesign your entire blog every year, but I've just learned so much and I think this one is, this is the design that's going to stick and I just understand so much more and I feel like learning about SEO, search engine optimization and marketing for one area of my life which is you know the the food blog it it applies to everything we're doing as musicians too so it doesn't feel as fragmented anymore yeah Yeah. 
no that's definitely that's definitely true and everything you learn you know it they benefit each other yes. right mm-hmm. so that's been nice and it's it's funny because you know last week we were talking about eric's law mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. <laughs> and in a in a kind of a, a different way that happened again where sarah was like i'm gonna redesign my blog i'm really excited i'm going into wordpress i'm just gonna sit at my desk and work for three hours and i'm like okay uh what do i do now (laughs) just because that's how it is sometimes right Mm -hmm. and then at kind of as soon as sarah started working on this my sister who works in media production stuff she was like can you make two two theme songs for me and then our friend Carly, who I was just talking about, he was like, oh, will you make this new song for me? I was like, sure. And then two people on Fiverr were like, hey, we need songs. And I'm like, um, okay, now I'm overwhelmed with work, just like kind of out of the blue. Mm-hmm. And so that's like a positive Eric's Law, <laughs> where instead of you being in pain and then I'm in pain, you were like, I'm going to go uh, dive head, for- head first into work for a few weeks. Then the universe was like, all right, Eric, here's a ton of work on your plate. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, I'll take it. But yeah, that's kind of been what's going on. Yeah. Do you want to pivot to uh, my experience yesterday? Sure. Was that yesterday? It was. Yeah? Sure. <laughs> it seemed like you were still thinking about something. I I just was, you know, I feel like oftentimes we talk about how time isn't real here. It's not. Because I don't it doesn't feel like it was yesterday, but Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. So I don't even know where to start. I'm stressed thinking about it. Eric went to the gym alone yesterday. If you listened to last week's episode, I talked about how my knees have been giving me issues for the past few weeks. They're finally, I think, ninety five percent better. But just to err on the side of caution, I've been not working out as often as i normally would so eric's been going to the gym without me and yesterday go ahead (laughs) yesterday i was going to the gym and i was driving by myself our gym is like seven or eight minutes from our house and i was just driving and i was like wouldn't it be well i okay Let's rewind. Let me rewind. As you can tell, I'm uncomfortable, which is why I'm struggling here to speak. But sometimes when I go running, I get this ang- this anxiety that hits me. I don't know if I've talked about it, and I don't know exactly why it happens. There's more to dig into here. But sometimes I'll be running, and I'll be like a few miles from the house, or not even that far. And I'll have this thought of like, wow, I feel so far away from our house. And then I like this like panicky feeling sets in and that's kind of it, right? I just feel like, huh, I'm so far away from the house. That's scary for some reason. Now, I don't really get it because, you know, I've lived in different places. Like I don't, I don't think it's necessarily like our home, more of like our home base, right? And... I don't really know where it comes from or why it most of the time doesn't happen. I mean, I used to run, I used to run a lot. I'd run like seven miles and I'd be like three and a half miles from the house, which would take me like 35 minutes to get back to the house from, and I like wouldn't care. But now sometimes I'm like pretty close to the house, but I still feel anxious and like legitimately anxious, like kind of freaking out. And I'm just on a run in the neighborhood. So I always attributed that to, well, I talked to a therapist about it before COVID. And we kind of, she thinks it was my body kind of reverting to and feeling like I felt when I was sick with cancer. And I was kind of stuck in the hospital for hours and hours and hours very often just kind of this stuck feeling attached to a lot of IVs and wires and whatnot, and you can't go anywhere and you can't do anything, right? You're like confined to the space. So it used to happen when I was, I would be stuck in traffic and I'd kind of be freaking out, like almost a claustrophobic feeling. So I talked to my therapist about that and she was like, well, if you think about it, it's kind of the same, right? Your body's like, this is the same, this is the same feeling we had when we were sick 
couldn't go anywhere, couldn't move. All of it is totally out of your control, right? And when you're stuck in traffic, that's kind of what it is. Can't get off at an exit. If if something, if you have a medical emergency, can't get off at an exit because there are cars, right? And I tend to not worry about specific things like that, but I think that's where it stems from. So it really only happens if I'm alone and like on a run far away. Most of the time it doesn't. But it's been happening a lot in like the last week. So I kind of thought before I went to the gym, huh, is this going to happen in the car while I'm on the way to, or at the gym when I'm there? And of course, saying that kind of, you know, I planted the seed of thought in my brain. So then I'm driving and I just got this very like lonely, I'm alone in the world. No one's around. And I'm not thinking, I'm not thinking if something goes wrong, I'm fucked. I'm not thinking about that at all. But that's like the feeling I get, right? Like I'm not actively worrying about something. I'm just in my car in a neighborhood, like totally safe. Nothing's wrong. But my body is responding like panic. Mm -hmm. So I'm driving to the gym, which I do every single day. But since I'm by myself this time, I... I'm legitimately panicking and usually I can kind of just break myself out of it and kind of like if I'm running I'll just I'll start running really fast and kind of expend some of that extra energy and just like get it out and then I like calm down and if you've ever had an anxiety attack I won't call it a panic attack because they're different so I've been told so I'll just call it an anxiety attack or feeling panic right if you've ever experienced that you get like this crazy, or at least I do, I get this crazy euphoric feeling after it goes away where I'm like, oh my God, I'm so glad that's over. I feel amazing now. Like my baseline Mm -hmm. feels amazing. Actually, it's probably not even a baseline. I'm probably getting like a huge flood of dopamine or something just from the panic going away. I don't know which chemical is which. They're all so related. Like it's so impossible to separate the effects of all of them. Well, I'm getting a flood of happy juice (laughs) after the panic feeling goes away. So usually I can kind of get there and be like, whew, okay, I did it. But it didn't really go away. And like when I talk about like feeling this panic, I'm talking like maybe 20, 30 seconds. And yesterday it was a few minutes, which when you're freaking out feels like an eternity. Right? Is that just me? No, it's everyone. Okay. (laughs) I just want to clarify some things with another person. So this is happening. I'm like, what do I do? I picked up my phone. I'm like, I got to talk to someone because just talking to someone gets me out of my own head, right? So I called Sarah. Sarah's working. Didn't have her phone. Didn't answer. I called my dad. I didn't even tell you this. I called my dad in the car because I'm like, I'm fucking legitimately freaking out. And and I don't know why. I don't know why I'm freaking out. Nothing is. I, I could tell myself nothing is wrong. Like, everything's fine, but my heart is racing, and I'm, like, mildly shaking, and I'm just... I think it was the caffeine that you had in the morning. And lack of food. Yeah. So it was probably that. Amplifying what you... Right. Yeah. What I can usually resolve on my own. Yeah. Right? So I (laughs) I called my dad, and I actually didn't... I never even got to tell him why I called him, so he's going to be listening to this, and this is how he's going to find out tomorrow, but... I called him and he was like, what's up, Bear? And I'm like, hey, Dad, uh, what are you doing? What are you doing right now? Like trying so hard to seem normal, right? And he's like, oh, we're, uh, we're out in Montauk with our, with our buddies. We're with the Myers and the Rivers, <laughs> like just all of their friends. Like, <laughs> he's like, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm drinking a beer on the beach with my friends. What's up? We're about to go to dinner. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> don't let me bother you. I'm fine. And I'm like legitimately freaking out more than i have in like years as far as i can remember and he's like oh okay you know sorry like but you know love you bye and i'm like yeah i love you too and i'm like daddy (laughs) see but it's funny because it's like not like yes it's because i'm closest to you and my dad but it's really just like just the act of communicating with anybody i know just to get myself out of my own head <laughs> kind of helped but then i I'm, i got to the gym 
And I was like, what do I, what do I do now? So I went in and I got on the bike and I was like, well, this is a safe place. I'm at the gym all the time, but it like kind of lingered. It never really came back all the way. But now listen, I know I've talked about it before, but just to reiterate, the first time I ever had anxiety was when I got way too high when I was in college, just like high on weed. That's it. Just weed. Weed can really fuck you up though. Like it can really mess with your brain which is strange because it's just weed, right? But I just had this like crazy derealization thing and I was considering, it was the start of my what is life do journey where I had for the first time in my life considered, huh, I'm a living being on this planet. How crazy is that? But it freaked me out because I was way too high. And I had like, I kind of, I wouldn't say out of body, but I felt, I just felt detached from my person right and so every time i've had anxiety after that moment it's kind of been like that where i'm like is any of this real what is life dude so like that's kind of mixed in blended in with these other feelings Mm -hmm. so it was kind of happening and i was freaking out at the gym and i was texting sarah and i was like all right i guess i'll drive back home now and i made it through i listened to butter by by dynamite by (laughs) bts And sang along, and it it was fine, but it's a surreal, it's surreal to talk about, because I'm like, what even happened? Like, nothing, nothing bad happened, Mm -hmm. which is the thing that's fucked up to me, right? That's the thing that's fucked up about anxiety in general. It's like nothing, sometimes nothing bad is happening, and you're freaking out, right? I understand having anxiety if you, you get in a car accident or something. And you're like, I'm freaking out because I just got in a car accident. But when you're just kind of like doing your thing, I'm just driving to the gym at three o'clock in the afternoon, going to ride a, a stationary bike, la-di-da, and then boom, like panic for no reason. So that's what happened yesterday. <laughs> I don't think I've ever talked that long on the podcast straight, ever. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I truly do think like the not not i'm not trying to be like one of those people because i've dealt with like mental health issues my entire life and it sucks when people try to reduce it down to one influence but i definitely think that the effects of caffeine cannot be understated there have been times when i've had too much coffee and i think i'm gonna die like several hours later and then i have to remember that that's what happened So it's almost like, and another thing also, I think it's that we've been under quarantine for over a year and then we're just like starting to get back to normal life, which is to say we haven't gone anywhere separately for a long time. So just you driving alone again after months and months and months of us going to the grocery store together, going to the gym together. I feel like that's another piece of it. Yeah, that's a good point. I never really considered. Um, But the thing that happens to me, like another, yet another aspect of it is I have this fear that it's going to last forever, right? I'm like, am I going to be, am I going to have this fear of anxiety for the rest of my life? Am I going to be able to overcome it? And then yesterday I started thinking, I'm like, okay, well, all I did that freaked me out was leave the house without sarah and just (laughs) went to the gym and i was like am i going to become agoraphobic and i'm going to be afraid to leave the house i'm like that can't happen to me because i have a life to live and it's a serious issue for some people right Mm -hmm. and i'm like well that could be me why couldn't that be me why couldn't that be a serious issue for me and i have to like talk myself Right, and that's another part of the anxiety. It's like, well, I'm agoraphobic now. I can't, I can't ever leave the house. I can't be a touring musician. I can't even go to the grocery store. And it's like all this stuff. Do you also hear like this neurotic New York Jew in there? Just like I can't even go to the grocery store. Like this is just like it's all part of it's all in the blood. Right? I'll bring you bagels though. It'll Thank be you. fine. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So all this stuff, like, it's happening in my brain simultaneously. Mm-hmm. So. I don't really know how to conclude this. There's no solution yet. 
That's the end of the episode. Bye, guys. <laughs> Thanks for listening. If you have any therapists for a recommendation. Mm-hmm. No, I mean, I like I know I know it'll be fine. But I'm trying to figure out where it comes from. And I definitely think in some circumstances, what my therapist said about, you know, what well, your your brain is saying, oh, well, this is how you felt when you were doing chemo. Like, I, I get that connection. I understand it but I don't think it's the entire picture. And I think... And also doesn't really help inform what you should do now. Right, right. Maybe some affirmations of that's not happening anymore, Mm -hmm. right? Oh, by the way, speaking of, I I went to see my oncologist for a checkup the other day and I got blood work done and uh, I'm in my 10th year of being cancer-free, which is crazy. So it's a quick little update. He says, winking at the camera. Um, but yeah, so basically I'm just going to try to keep trying to understand this a little more and understand why I basically am freaking myself out about freaking out. I think that's mostly what it is. Hey, I'm scared of being anxious. That makes me anxious, mm-hmm. right? Well, you're not alone in that. You know that, right? Mm-hmm. That's like a huge... Yeah. But that's almost always involved in recurrence of panic attacks once you've had your first one because it's so like embarrassing i mean it shouldn't be but it's really embarrassing to have that happen around people that you don't know or even that you do know and then you start thinking about when it could happen again and uh yeah it makes it worse and i you know i view myself as like a very confident um steady i don't know I don't like I don't worry about people looking at me or what people think of me when I'm in public or anything. And I was riding the I was riding the bike yesterday and I was just like everyone knows I'm freaking out. And that never happens to me. I never think, especially at the gym, which is a very vulnerable vulnerable place for a lot of people, especially beginners, right? A lot of people think, "Oh, I uh, I'm not doing I'm not I'm not lifting that much. My form might be wrong. Everyone's looking at me and they think I'm an idiot." Like that never happened. Nothing like that ever happens to me. And yesterday I was riding the bike thinking everyone knows I'm freaking out. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's so strange. That's like my entire life is that feeling of being watched. So now you understand. (laughs) When you get social anxiety, do you feel panic or do you just feel uncomfortable? So, I mean... Going back to the caffeine thing, here's what it is, is that this const- a specific constellation of like sensations in your body could be associated to a couple different emotions, right? Like you could be like an anxious feeling on its own could be associated with being anxious or being excited, like doing something super like thrilling i guess like skydiving whatever and then then, like your therapist was saying it's just a matter of what what does my history tell me that this constellation of sensations means so if you have like a lot of history of doing like like you're a thrill seeker you like doing like adventurous things um you'll you'll feel those feelings and you might just more easily associate them with being excited and so for me what what was the the question about social anxiety okay so it always starts out with the body thing with me i think because so like for example we went to starbucks the other day and i had ordered on my phone and i went in to go pick it up we went to a different starbucks um than we usually do and it was a lot busier And so I got really anxious because I didn't want to go up to the window to pick up my mobile order. I could like see it right there, but it was like behind um, like a little glass. So I had to actually ask one of the baristas and they were really, really busy. So I was like, like, the first thing I feel is like the like hair standing up, like stomach dropping sort of feeling. And then, like, once you notice that, I feel like that's when it it can start to spiral, which is why people always tell you, like, learn breathing techniques. Like, because if you can manage the physical sensations, 
sometimes that's a lot more effective than trying to like reason yourself out of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Do you ever feel like, like I, the marker for me and I'm mm-hmm. like, I am feeling anxious is I feel like my entire body is like buzzing. Mm-hmm. Like I have like this like electric buzz throughout and like it, physically comes out as like a mild shake like i'm not like just like a mild tremor Mm -hmm. you know but that's i feel like my whole body gets hot and is like buzzing with electricity right and it's paired with like the tummy butterflies right which is like you said is also what happens when you get excited right yes um yeah and it's it's just so strange because i don't mind asking people who are doing their job to do their job for me Mm-hmm. Like, I don't mind going to Starbucks and say, oh, hey, sorry, I know you're busy. That's mine. Yeah. I mean, they signed up to do that. Yeah. And, like, just the the difference in, well, so far, what we've learned about me is that what freaks me out is nothing. Right. Well, but see, to you, my something is nothing. And to me, like, I don't get anxious in situations where there's not a very specific, um, mm-hmm. like, social thing causing it. Yeah. Like... I don't have like generalized anxiety about anything about like existing. Sometimes it makes me sad, but I don't get anxious about anything like that. So it's like it it's you get to a point where you can intellectually know that something is not a threat to you or that you're safe, but it's it's just about giving yourself enough of that evidence until you are able to kind of disarm that like automatic response, which is why I feel like a lot of times like exposure therapy is what people recommend for phobias because I don't know, just gradually getting yourself used to having the negative sensation sitting with it and then Mm -hmm. realizing, Oh, I'm out on the other side and I'm fine. Yep. And you have to do it over and over again. I mean, like I'm 30, I I still get anxious at Starbucks. Do you know what I mean? So it's like sometimes no matter how much you know the truth of something, you still have to do work like reprogramming your body. Right. And like I've said, I I think most of my panicking happens because I'm like, wouldn't this be a terrible time to panic? And then the other, the other half of my brain is like, better panic. Right. (laughs) So, but really it's like, well, if I'm out on a run, I mean, you know where I run. Like, it's the same loop we walk for the most part, right? I mm. will just do it twice or something. Like, we're, we're in our, our, we live in like a nice little neighborhood. There's literally nothing to worry about. But my brain is like, well, if you panic a mile from, a mile away from the house, you're going to have to get back another mile while you're panicking until you can like be in your home and be like, wow, I'm safe now. Right. You could, I could pick you up though. Right. You could call a lift. I know. But like. It's important to remind yourself. It's almost important if you have like a recurring um, like ne- neurosis about something to actually write things down that to remind yourself mm-hmm. because you lose the ability to reason sometimes. Yeah. And it's funny because I have thought about that. I'm like, I have my phone. I could just, mm-hmm. I could literally order a lift yeah. and be like, whatever. And then I think about that and I'm like, I would never do that because why would I do that when I can just jog back to the house? My legs work, right? And it's like this, it's just this paradox, you know, it's like just totally contradictory thinking. Mm -hmm. Um, And I don't know. I mean, yesterday you said you were like, you you just have to keep doing stuff by yourself Mm. and just, right? Because... Listen, if I'm if I'm a mile away from the house and I have a full blown panic attack, what's gonna happen? I'm gonna like lay down in a bush and cry for five minutes, and then at some point it's gonna go away, right? At some point, I just it goes away, right? Is that true mm-hmm. for everyone? Usually, in my experience, it's been like even when I have the worst anxiety attacks, at some point I just like my brain is like, no, look, you're fine, right? So if I just do it, what's the worst that happens if I freak out while I'm on a run? Eventually it goes away and I'm just in the neighborhood on a nice day. I'm like, oh, wow, I just totally freaked out. 
guess mm-hmm. I better walk home. Like at some point it just goes away. And that's impor- important to remember. Like your brain can't be in panic mode for the rest of your life. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe it can. I'm not a psycho. <laughs> I, and that's why I keep looking at you like, I'm not. Am I right? I, I know. Yeah. But like, I don't know what happens to people when, you know, they like, quote unquote, go crazy. I mean, that's like something you'd hear in the 50s. But, you know, mm-hmm. my brain tells me you can't be in a panic attack for the rest of your life. At some point, it's just going to go away. Well, I mean, like, the worst, worst situation, short of, like, getting harmed as a result of being in a, having a panic attack, I guess, is that you think you're having a heart attack, which sometimes happens, and then you go to the hospital or you call an ambulance and they tell you you're panicking and you're fine. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. And in this country, (laughs) they charge you tens of thousands of dollars for that service. Yeah. But it's funny because I never think that something physically is wrong with me. I've never worried about that. Mm-hmm. I'm always, and that's what's so frustrating is I don't know, I don't know what it is. I, I don't have the reason. So stay tuned, I guess, because I'm going to try to keep figuring this out because I want it to go away for mm. good. <laughs> so I think that's all I have to say about that. I actually got through that without struggling. Like I thought for sure it was going to be one of those things where I try to open up a little on the podcast without kind of a back and forth. And I just kind of fumble over it. But that time, I just, I really just let it all out. So, hope you enjoyed that. <laughs> I hope I hope that kind of resonated or helped someone. I'm sure it did. But let me know. Reach out. We're in this together. Is there anything else you want to talk about? Nothing comes to mind. Okay. We've been going, you know, every time we're like, yeah, you know, like, if it's a half an hour, like, that's fine. And then they're always, like, around 50 minutes. So... that was a lot that was a lot okay thank you guys for listening thank you for watching if you watch and we will send it over to our supporter shout out oh wait i usually do the thing i'll do it again Uh, but we'll talk to you next week now let's send it over to our supporter shout out Hi guys we're pausing this conversation for a few moments to give a big thank you to our supporters These are our listeners who make a monthly contribution through Anchor, which is our hosting platform. If you'd like to become a supporter as well, you can visit anchor.fm slash whatislifedude and click on the support button. And if you enjoy the show, another great way to support us is by giving us a positive rating and a review on iTunes. Just takes a few moments and it helps new listeners find the podcast so we can continue to grow our community. So thank you so much to everyone who supports us in one way or another. This podcast wouldn't exist without you guys. So without further ado, shout out to our anchor supporters, Inga, Mel, Morgan, Jennifer, Scotty, Glenn, Kevin, Jessica, Marie, Nina, Izzy, Reem, Alexis, Annalise, Nadia, Merv, Teresa, Kelsey, Ellis, Anna, Megan, Samantha, Dylan, Cousin Dylan, and Sarah.